I've been working on this Angular and Electron app and the basic idea is that I can upload the raw footage of one of my videos. It will identify sections that should be removed, like long silences or failed like long silences or failed attempts to read a part of the script, and then it will give me a cleaned up edit of the video. But what we're going to talk about in this video is why you can't trust AI in your code and why that made this specific Angular component necessary. I'm using an LLM in this application to determine which sections of the video need to be removed, but relying on an LLM in your code is interesting. We're used to programming generally being deterministic, like if I have this function that adds two numbers, I feel pretty safe knowing that it is always going to behave the way I expect. But if I were to change this function to prompt an LLM to get the result instead, apart from this being a terrible idea generally, now I can't say with certainty whether I'll always get the result I expect, even if it seems to be working 100% of the time. The LLM might get the answer wrong, or it might return the answer in a data format we aren't expecting, and so we would need to account for that. The more complex the problem, the more difficult this becomes. I quickly ran into issues with my app, including this amusing one where I was able to get the data returned in a pretty consistent format, but the LLM would occasionally extend the format so that it could add in running commentary about the choices it was making. So I decided pretty quickly that this application needs to provide a good user experience even if the LLM returns bad results. I haven't properly optimized the LLM side of things yet, but even if I could get the results to be extremely good and consistent, it's almost guaranteed that some users are going to have a poor experience if I rely entirely on the LLM to correctly identify what to remove. That's where this cursed Angular component comes into the story. I say it's cursed because it's a rather atypical component and the implementation uses a combination of a bunch of interesting things, so I thought it would be fun to go through. Rather than just accepting the LLM suggested removals, this component gives us a chance to review them. We can add or remove individual words by clicking them, dragging over a range, or we can toggle entire sections on or off. The recording is sectioned off into chunks based on where there are long gaps between words in the recording. And once we're happy, we click next and it will start editing the video. So let's talk about what makes this component interesting. And just a quick note before we continue, if you're interested in learning a modern and declarative approach to building Angular apps, you might be interested in checking out my Angular Start course in the description. Side note, it is much more industry standard than what we will be looking at in this video. We can start with the fact that this is an Angular component built with the analog component format, which is why the component looks like this and not like this. I'm not going to linger on this aspect because I've covered this component format in other videos, but basically this allows doing almost all of the normal Angular stuff just with a different syntax and it comes with some extra features as well. So just to give you the general sense of what is going on here, in the template we are looping over this sectioned word signal, which contains our array of words split up into sections based on pauses in the recording. We then have a nested loop that displays each word from that section, and we have some interesting interactions set up that are responsible for the ability to both click to toggle the state of a particular word, or to drag across a range to toggle the state of multiple words. There is surprisingly little code to get this interaction working. Clicking an individual word is simple enough, we just call toggle for that particular word. For the drag functionality, we use mouse enter to detect when the mouse is over a particular word. But we also need to know if the user is currently dragging, not just hovering over a word. So on the parent, we just toggle this dragging signal on and off, on mouse down and mouse up, and check the state of this dragging signal before calling the toggle function for the word the user is currently hovering over. And that's all we need to do to get this somewhat complex looking dragging interaction working. Then there is the toggle functionality itself, which is also interesting and involves the use of the create notifier utility from ng extension. The basic idea is that we have this override map. And if we want to modify the state of a particular word, we will add its ID to this override map along with the state it should be in. The problem is that we want to react to this override map changing in computed signals. I used to do this with Angular's mutate method on signals, which would allow you to mutate a value, but still notify signals that depend on it. But that doesn't exist anymore. 
This is why we use this create notifier from ng extension. The basic idea is that we create this override notifier, which will give us access to this listen signal. By referencing this listen signal within this computed, this computed signal will be recomputed every time the listen signal changes. If we take a look at the toggle function itself, we see that after updating the map, we call notify on the override notifier. This will cause this listen signal to be incremented by one, which will trigger the recomputation using the map we just updated. Essentially, this notifier is just a way to manually indicate to signals that something has been updated, which is useful in a situation like this where we want to mutate some existing value like a map. There are some other interesting things here too, so I'll link to a gist with the entire component so you can take a look at anything you like. For example, the way sectioned words is computed is kind of interesting, as well as the code for overriding entire sections. And I'm also making use of Spartan UI components here that I'll likely talk more about in another video soon. If you have any thoughts about how you'd approach this component differently, feel free to let me know in the comments. And of course, if you like the video, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope you have a great day.